Toronto, Canada. Long after midnight, 2.5 million people across the city are quietly sleeping. When suddenly, I don't know. There's some kind of huge explosion happening. A deafening blast rocks the night sky. I have no idea what the is going on. 4 a.m. and this huge explosion. College student Ruben Tumengill races into the street as another mile-high fireball thunders into the air at Mach 1 speed, shattering windows 12 blocks away. Wow, that is insane. You can actually feel the explosions happening. You feel the air pressure trying to push you down. Do you know guys know what's happening? He looks like a plane crash now. I was telling people, you know, we should really leave. We need to get out of here because we don't know what's going to happen next. Whether it be another big explosion that could possibly kill me. Now the detonations become more frequent and more devastating. Whoa! Jolting houses in a six mile radius. Whoa. Including reporter Marita Elos. It was a very scary feeling, and that's when I thought, gosh, I don't even want to think how many people may have died. When Marita gets closer to the danger zone, she discovers the horrifying reality. Holy. Holy. Seven alarm blaze rises from a propane depot filled with half a million liters of the volatile chemical, more than twice as hot as natural gas. The combusting propane erupts into a 2,000 degree fireball. It looked almost like a nuclear bomb. And it's unleashing asbestos all over Toronto. Police evacuate 12,000 neighborhood residents. It takes 200 firefighters 16 hours to extinguish the blaze. 100 homes are damaged in the disaster, many rendered unlivable. But thanks to a quick emergency response, only eight people are injured. Toronto got really lucky with this one because it could have been dozens of casualties in that explosion. When an ear-splitting blast roused this city from its slumber, its citizens were met with a nightmare in their own backyards. Holy 